Hello, good morning and welcome to Bridge Chapel's Thought for the Day. My name's John and I'm going to be leading you in today's Thought for the Day. We're going to be looking at Philippians chapter 4 verses 1 to 9 and we're going to be looking at the theme of joy in unity. So thank you for joining us as we do this. I'll just read those verses to you now. Philippians chapter 4 verses 1 to 9. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. I entreat you, Odia, and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have laboured side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, this passage is really a treasury of truth. I could have spoken to you about any of the verses in this passage. But thinking about our theme of joy and unity, I just wanted to t us to hone in on a couple of verses, particularly verse 2 and verse 3. I'll just read them to you now. I entreat you, O dear, and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have laboured side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. You see, from these verses we can see that two women, Euodia and Syntyche, are clearly not experiencing the joy of unity. Clearly there's been some kind of dispute or a fallout and Paul, who is many, many miles away in prison, has heard about it. And he wants them to sort it out. Now, it isn't interesting that Paul does not say what the dispute is. He does not take sides. He does not say either woman is particularly at fault. But he asks them to sort it out. He wants them to agree in the Lord. Now, I found it really noticeable that Paul actually names the women. This letter was going to be read out to the whole church at Philippi and Paul names the people Euodia and Syntyche. He doesn't make a kind of general comment saying make sure everyone is united or make sure no one is arguing. He names them. You see I've been in many work meetings where you get lots of information about general deadlines like this piece of work needs to be completed by then or this deadline needs to be met by by everybody but often in these meetings you're not individuals are not named but Paul does it differently he names them so clearly he believes there is an issue that needs sorting out now let's look a little bit closer at the verses okay so if we look at verse 2, let's look at some of the language Paul uses. I entreat you, O oh dear, and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Now the NIV doesn't use the word entreat, it uses the word plead. So Paul is basically pleading with these women to be united, to forgive one another, to experience the joy of unity. But how are they going to do this? Now, in that passage in verse 9, Paul says this, what you, have heard, sorry, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. You see, Paul wants them to follow his pattern of living. But what is this pattern of living? Well, 
to help us understand a bit more, we can turn earlier into the book of Philippians to chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, which I'll read to you now. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. You see, Paul calls all Christians, he calls you Odia and Syntyche to live selfless lives. This is what he says to them. He says, follow my pattern. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. So Paul is basically saying, put other people's needs first. Be humble. It's not all about you. He says in verse 4, let each of you look not only to his interests, but also to the interests of others. Now, if you heard your Syntyche had been doing that, looking not just to their own interests, but to the interests of others, I wonder if they would have fallen out. If they had been preferring other people's needs above their own, I wonder if they would have had this argument. But Paul, although he talks about his own pattern of life, also puts points to a more ultimate example of how to live. And we see this in chapter 2, verses 5 to 7, which I'll read to you now. Have this in mind among yourselves, which is, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. You see, Jesus, the Son of God, is our ultimate example. He who, who is the Son of God came from heaven and became a man. He gave up all of that glory and took the form of a servant and became the likeness of men. Jesus' his example is that he doesn't put his own rights first. He doesn't put his own views first, but he instead serves other people. He demonstrates self-sacrificial love. So much so that in John's Gospel we see Jesus actually washing his own disciples' feet. Now I wonder if you heard you and Syntyche had an attitude like Jesus, of serving others of self-sacrificial love, whether they would have fallen out if they'd been putting other people's needs first. It's a real challenge to us to experience the joy of being united with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Ultimately, we see the joy of unity in the Godhead of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And that is pure joy in their relationship together. And God wants us to experience the joy of unity in relationships. So that's my challenge to you today. Are you experiencing the joy of unity with your fellow believers? Thank you for listening. Hope you have a great day.